So the topic is how to biohack your gut health to prevent and reverse aging. And as I was doing this presentation, I thought it was actually kind of difficult to pull off because the, the idea of gut health makes perfect sense and the idea of aging makes perfect sense. But how to tie the two together, I think it's gonna take a little more leap of faith than I can do in this presentation. So we will talk about gut health, we'll talk about aging uh, in, in pieces, and then we'll focus on the things you can do to actually biohack your gut because that's the whole important part. We don't care to talk all about the gut and all about the aging. We just want the benefits, right? How do we get to the benefits? What work do we have to do? So let's go through, and you guys can judge me on how well I connected those dots without boring you with any kind of research or anything. So we're gonna have a real simple outline. What is gut health? What is aging? How does gut health cause aging? And how to biohack your gut health to prevent and reverse aging. Um, so first, I just wanna start with what is gut health? Gut health is basically a reference to the functions of the gut. And we, we it's too simple to, we, 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 it's, it's a, our, our bodies are absolutely amazing. I like to, to tell the story of if when you eat cheeseburger, french fries, whatever, you don't poop out cheeseburger, french fries. You poop out the same brown stuff, basically regardless of what you eat. It may be harder, it may be more wet, it may be different forms, but it's always brown and squishy, right? Our bodies are incredible. No matter what we put in our mouth, our body can turn it into energy. Humans are incredible. If you fed a lion our diet, they would not do well, right? They, they, they would be sick. If you fed a cow our diet, like, our bodies are absolutely incredible. If you remember the movie Back to the Future when, when Marty came back from the future and the car was flying and he was scrounging through the trash cans looking for energy sources and he grabbed like banana peels yeah. and all kinds of stuff and was shoving it into the car and it would make energy, right? You can't do that nowadays. You can only put gasoline or I guess electricity into your cars now, but you can't put banana peels in or ethanol in. It just, well, I guess they do put ethanol in gas, but you know what I mean? Like you can't pour vodka into your tank, right? So, but what's incredible about our human body that we don't give it enough credit for is you can shove anything down your gullet. Look at America across the board, people eating Cheetos and don't even eat vegetables, pizza. I mean, it, it's incredible what people eat and they still live. Like our average age of life is 79. That's yeah. impressive. Wait, 69. I think it went from 71 to 69. I think that it, our age dropped it recently dropped. because yeah. of COVID and all that. I can't remember if it's 79 or 69, but anyway, eating junk, you can still live to 70. That's pretty impressive. Um, now, will you be optimal? That, that's a whole other question. So I want to talk about these few basic categories. And if, if anyone's ever heard me talk about gut, we can talk about each one of these categories for an hour each. So we're going to break it down real simple. And so the idea is that when you eat food, your body, your gut must break it down. That's the digestion. It's got to digest the food because we don't poop out hamburgers, we poop out poop. So that means the food was broken down. Not only do you have to break it down, you have to absorb it. You can break down things perfectly, but if you can't absorb it, there's no purpose. If you don't break it down, you can't absorb it. After it's broken down, you also have to ferment certain portions of it. I know the nutritionists like to say um, fibers are fermented, proteins are, if they're not digested. Putrefied. Yeah, proteins are putrefied if they're not digested in carbs. No, carbs are fermented. Fats are, it's rancid. A, rancid. Yeah, rancify. <laughs> it's an ugly word, rancify. <laughs> so if you don't digest it, that's what happens to your food in your gut and something else is eating the food, right? The reason why the fat is rancid yeah. is because something else is digesting your food if you are not, and that's not how your human body uh, meant it to be. So fermentation, breakdown of fiber by bacteria, the microbial balance is probably the thing that gets the most attention in the words gut health and microbiome is it's all about good bacteria and a lot of it is around people selling products of probiotics, right? Oh, buy my probiotic, buy my pro so, but it's not just about taking your probiotics, it's about the balance, it's about the, the fungi, it's about the absence of parasites. Uh, now there's some debate whether we should be fully absent of parasites or whether we're supposed to live with some, that's a debate in functional medicine but I think most people agree, like, we don't want a bunch. Yeah, like <laughs> minimal parasites and micro, if there are any just microscopic ones, not big old tapeworms, I don't think anybody's arguing that that's okay. Um, and then the barrier, that's not something that's, that's hot and sexy that's talked about in gut health, but our barrier to the outside world, one of the things that's very interesting is that the food we eat um, doesn't actually enter our body. 
it passes through our body. So our mouth to anus connection, our alimentary canals, what we call it medicine, our, it's called an alimentary canal because the canal travels through us. It's the outside world enveloped inside of us and we choose what we want to take out of it and we leave everything else in it and then it becomes the outside environment again when we poop it out. It never enters our body. But if our barrier is broken down, we can't prevent invaders and prevent inflammation and all of that. I like to think of it as if you're driving through, and we were in Colorado recently, yeah. and we went through this tunnel, which is just amazing that you could literally burrow a, a hole through a mountain, <laughs> put concrete over it, and like you feel safe driving under a mountain. Like that's, that's a little <laughs> bizarre. So that's what our gut is. Our gut is a tunnel through the mountain. You didn't enter the mountain rocks and, and dirt and come out the other side through some molecular <laughs> disruption and put back together, right? You just went through it. You went in whole, you came out whole. Luckily, the, the tunnels don't absorb us and, and digest <laughs> us, right? Uh, and so, of course, with all of that being said, you must eliminate. Because if you don't eliminate, well, then you're FOS, and, and that's not fun, okay? So we're going to go through each one of these topics in, in very, very minimal detail um, just to give you guys ideas. I have a whole gut restoration course online, so if you want to learn even more, I talk in boring detail about each one. Um, in, in order to get more detail. But the first step is supporting digestion. So if you have any issues with digestion called indigestion or bloating, or uh, we'll go with constipation because constipation is usually a problem of digestion. If you're not digesting your food, it, it becomes a rock in you and then it doesn't move, right? So stomach acid is the first step of digestion. That's in your stomach. And you can replace stomach acid if you don't have enough with a product called betaine. <clears throat> and then after the stomach, the food moves into the small intestine, which is where you have enzymes that break it down. And then you can supplement with digestive enzymes, which makes sense. At the same time, bile comes from your liver and, and gallbladder. And if you're not making enough bile, you can use bitters to stimulate your bile production and you can replace ox bile. We're not big fans of replacing ox bile because it, it causes side effects when you swallow it. But those are the things that you might need to do to make sure you're supporting your digestion um, north to south is what we call it. Absorption is, is really critically important because you can have the greatest digestion, you can have the greatest diet, but if you don't absorb it, then it's practically just going to make expensive poop, right? Really good, healthy poop that you didn't get to absorb. And so when we talk about the shag carpet, we're not talking about the, the, the Austin Powers shagging. Uh, we're talking about the shag carpet. And so the, the brief explanation of the shag carpet is that the intestines, we want them to be highly absorbable. If you spill a cup of coffee on the carpet, it's gonna make a very small spot and it's gonna soak up the entire cup of coffee. If you splatter a cup of coffee on the floor, it's gonna spread really far and it's not gonna get absorbed. It's gonna be easy to mop up. We want the shag carpet because the shag is what allows us to absorb it increases our surface area, increases the potential for getting that nutrient. So it's a combination of you've got to digest the food into small enough components for your cells to absorb. So this goes back to one of the other things I like to say about digestion is if I gave you a uh, million dollars and, and gave you a cheeseburger and french fries and said, I want you to design a science lab that can break down this cheeseburger and french fries into microscopic carbohydrates microscopic proteins and microscopic fats, I don't think I could do it. I, I, it would take me years to figure out how to, even with the money, like how would I break that down into little bitty carbohydrates, proteins, and fats completely separately? That's incredible. And then even after you do all that, which your body does just by swallowing, miracle, and then after that, you have to have tiny little microscopic cells absorb those things. That's a miracle. And so it's such a fine-tuned Ferrari-style car that if anything goes wrong, the car is undrivable, right? So our absorption is critical and it's easy to overlook because it's not sexy, it's not on our outside, nobody likes to talk about it, we can't see it. You can only see it after you die and someone looks at your intestines, oh, there it is. Because even with biopsies, they can't go really this far down in the intestines with, with comfort let's say. So this is the invisible thing that's happening. And anyone that has any kind of micronutrient um, uh, mal uh, low, like low iron or low B12, or this is the problem. It's the absorption or the digestion or just not eating it, right? Cheetos don't have a lot of B12. 
after, or and this this is kind of happening simultaneously, simultaneously as the absorption. Uh, most of it happens in the large intestine, so kind of after the the uh, absorption. The fermentation of fiber deserves its own discussion. And so, just to everyone knows about probiotics these days. That's a pretty common term. Everyone knows what what probiotics are. But a lot of people don't know what prebiotics are, and prebiotics are just the thing that probiotics eat, right? The before. Pre means before, post means after. So the probiotics are the living organisms. Everybody knows that. They're in pills now um, and found in fermented foods and just dirty food. If you pull the carrot out of the ground and chomped on it, that's got probiotics on it. That's where we used to get our probiotics. Now all our vegetables are bleached and cleaned and, and sterilized before we ever touch them, right? So, um, so the prebiotics are the things that the probiotics eat. So when you eat that carrot right out of the ground, you've got both prebiotics, the carrot, and probiotics, the dirt, on the thing. So boom, boom. And then in your gut, those two things mix and create pro, uh, postbiotics. So humans cannot digest fiber. We cannot. We do not have the capacity. Only bacteria can. So this goes where we have this intimate uh, involvement with our bacteria. Without them, we cannot make short-chain fatty acids, which are postbiotics. So without fiber, we can't make post-chain uh, uh, postbiotics, and without probiotics, we can't make it. So we need both to get there. Postbiotics is probably a term no one's heard of, not many people have heard of. So the idea behind postbiotics needs a lot more research, a lot more discussion of what it actually does. We know a lot of the benefits of the gut come from these postbiotics. The main one that's gotten the most attention is butyrate. Butyrate is one of the main postbiotics. There's about seven or eight postbiotics that our bacteria make in our bowels. And butyrate, Marianne, do you remember what butyrate stimulates? Mm -hmm. Butyrate does two major, major, major things. Wasn't it liver something? It helps with the liver. That's not the major two. <laughs> so butyrate, weirdly enough, goes back to our shag carpet. So these small, little, tiny, little cells that are responsible for absorbing all the nutrients live on butyrate. Ooh. We oh. don't make butyrate. You didn't know that? <laughs> no, no, See, we're learning something. That. I'm sorry. I, I know I, I take something. Take all the blame. <laughs> so these tiny little cells live on butyrate, but we can't make butyrate. So this is one of the ways that disease begets more disease and wellness begets more wellness. Mm -hmm. Because as you have micronutrient disruptions, you start to break down cells and as the cells break down then they can't absorb or as you disrupt your microbiome with cheeseburgers french fries you grow less healthy bacteria less healthy bacteria means less butyrate less butyrate means less shag carpet less shag carpet means less vitamins less vitamins means cellular dysfunction so this is the dots i'm trying to connect between gut health and aging and we'll get to anything that affects nutrient levels ages Right? If you deplete yourself of iron, I think any person on the street would acknowledge the more vitamins you're deficient in, the, the faster you age, the faster you die. That just makes sense. So if the, if you connect the dot to the shaggier your carpet, <laughs> I think of you know the, the, that van with like the really shaggy dog. You know? So the shaggier your carpet, not that shag, the shaggier your carpet, the more nutrients you have, the more nutrients you have, the more vibrant your body can be, the slower you age. So we can at least make the point of slower aging, but you'll have to take a leap of faith a little bit to say that if you do these things, it actually reverses aging. We ain't gonna be teenagers again, but we can feel good, right, Marianne? So here we go with the more microbial balance. We've moved on from the fermentation. I thought I had another slide about butyrate, but I guess not, I'm gonna trim that one. So the microbial balance is the thing that gets the most attention in the microbiome gut health world, but it, it's really pretty overkill. So the common terms you'll see are SIBO, CFO, and just mold growth in, in the gut. Uh, I got a nod from Marianne on a couple of those. So of all of these things, the thing that gets the most attention is candida. Everyone thinks they have candida overgrowth. And that's partially true because many people do have candida overgrowth, but it gets way too much attention. Candida overgrowth happens for multiple reasons. Uh, antibiotics kill off bacteria, so fungi grow. Carbs and sugar feed candida, so candida overgrows. Stress feeds, and I'm using candida as the example because that's a prominent fungi, but I like to use CFO because we don't always know which fungus is overgrowing. 
but regardless of the fungus, it causes issues. So the other issue is as you disrupt that bacterial population, it protects you less and less. These good bacteria, if your bowels have 85% good bacteria, it protects you from the bad. It protects you from the fungi. They don't want to give up their stronghold. The antibiotics are forcing them out and then fungi grows. So the main focus is not to have a perfect gut, but we need to reclaim that 85% good bacteria that we might have lost over time. Stop me if you have questions. I'm just gonna keep rolling. A common, I'd say leaky gut has gotten to be more of a common term that more people know of nowadays. It's still very mystical to most people, but this goes back to our barrier. So just to pause for a second and go back to, to where we were. This is what we're talking about. We're talking about what is gut health. We've gone over digestion, we've gone over absorption, we've gone over fermentation, we've gone over microbial balance. Now we're at the barrier part, and this is the tunnel going through the mountain. If you're in a tunnel that digests you or you leak into the mountain, that would be a bad thing. That would not be a functioning tunnel. So what is leaky gut? The simplest explanation of leaky gut is that our cells have a what's called a tight junction. It's called tight because they're literally bound to each other tightly and nothing can get through. It's like a zipper. And we've all had those zippers that we bought a crappy jacket before. You know what I'm talking about. And you're, like, and you're, you're off and there's nothing you can do. You can't unzip it. You can't zip it again. You're just off the train and nothing's going to work. So what is supposed to happen is food is not supposed to get through the leaky gut. Nutrients are, not food. So when you eat carbs, when you eat bread, gluten is not supposed to get into our bloodstream and cause thyroid disease and autoimmunity. But as you have leaky gut, the gluten in its whole form crosses through before it's digested or we're picking on gluten. But whether it be dairy, tomatoes, spinach, kale, whatever it can be, if you have leaky gut, this, this tight junction is disrupted and now food in its whole form can step, skip from the outside directly to the bloodstream and the immune system has no choice but to kill it. If whole food comes across into your, bow, into your bowels, your immune system's response is to kill. So that's the basic understanding of leaky gut. Leaky gut is the root of most evil. I don't say all evil because heavy metals and chemicals and do all kinds of stuff. <laughs> But as far as our practice is concerned, we blame so much on the gut. And the reason why is not only because it's popular to talk about, but because we have seen miraculous things just by treating the gut. When, when I first started getting into gut healing, and I think I've got a slide on this, I'm skipping ahead a little bit, um, is that when I started treating the gut and people's migraines would flare or their skin rashes would flare, it, it really started to turn on that light that, gosh, if treating the gut can cause these non-gut side effects, what all is the gut contributing to? So the number one thing is always to fix the gut. It reduces inflammation, you get nutrients, and with nutrients, your body can fix anything. Your body can detoxify with nutrients. It doesn't need a special supplement if it's got the right nutrients from your diet and from your gut. So if you zoom in on what they're saying, all the leaky gut is contributing to <laughs> nutrient malabsorption, autoimmunity is a big one, food intolerances, blood-brain barrier breach. If you read Dr. Um, uh, Bredesen's book on Alzheimer's, a big portion of it is gut health, you know? And then just systemic inflammation. So what's wild about systemic inflammation is say you have chronic inflammation in your gut and you would think, well, how would that cause heart attacks? But it's been long known, I mean decades long, that if you have dental disease, gingivitis, if you have chronic gingivitis, you have earlier heart attacks. It's not because you have teeth in your heart, it's because chronic inflammation anywhere causes disease everywhere. So chronic inflammation in your gut absolutely causes heart disease. One of my, my famous stories now is we had a guy that had a heart attack at age 40, he's 41 now, and he, he was a picture of health, muscular, fit, eats well, and then we changed his gut mostly. Yes, we did do some chelation and detox, but we changed his gut mostly, and his heart vascular age from an ultrasound went from 95 all the way down to 55 or 56 or something. He's not yet to 40, but in a matter of a year, he's already dropped his arterial health by 40 years. And he still looks as fit. He doesn't look that much different, but it's amazing. You never know what's beneath the hood until you, you take it into the shop. That squeaky noise you hear that disappeared once you got into the shop. <laughs> so elimination, this stool shall pass. Uh, so uh, elimination, you gotta take the trash out daily. Uh, so whatever you need to stand on your head, squatty potty, natural calm, magnesium, aloe vera, whatever, get the poop out. That, that one's just pretty simple. 
right? So that's the end of this whole, what is gut health all about? Uh, elimination is of course, not only removing the stool, but it's removing the toxins. Your body processes and detoxifies toxins and its exit routes are three things, urine, sweat, and stool. Stool being the, the most voluminous, right? Mm -hmm. That's a lot. Um, and there's not everything you can eliminate through the stool. There's not everything you can eliminate through the urine. All three must be happening, sweat, urine, and stool. So the stool is the one people struggle with the most because we live in Texas. It's pretty easy to knock out the sweat part. And naturally, if you're sweating, usually you drink more water. So it's natural to knock out both of those. So what is aging? I don't think any of us need a lesson on what is aging. I think uh, as, as one of my patients, when she had Medicare, she liked to say, every year is a new indignity. And so <laughs> every time something would happen, she'd go, another indignity. Uh, and so here are the indignities in case you don't know. I tried to mix things we already know about with, with things that are medical. So one is blood vessels harden. Our blood pressure goes up over time where our heart disease, like you don't hear of heart attacks in 20 year olds. Well, I mean, now we are, but that's just crazy. Um, you don't hear strokes and stuff. It's because the arteries harden over time. That's what aging is doing. Our skin loses elasticity, right? We start to look older. Those wrinkles, wrinkles start to kick in, right? The wrinkles also go with good fat deposits. Too much attention is paid on Botox for, um, for wrinkles. And a lot of wrinkling just has to do with, if you ever look at a baby picture, they just have such full cheeks. They don't need Botox. They have so much fat underneath the skin that there's no ability to have wrinkles. So we lose the good fat. And what's the next one? The bad fat deposits. All of our face goes to our belly. And so that's why plastic surgeons will suck it out and put it in your face, right? Uh, it's brilliant. Uh, so telomeres shorten. Who knows what telomeres are? Yes, Marianne? Well, they're on the end of your chromosomes. Exactly. Yeah. And the longer they are, the better it is. Absolutely. And they shorten with aging or cell damage. Correct. And someone's been paying attention i know i didn't teach you that so you've been paying attention to podcasts and stuff so she absolutely nailed that on the head telomeres are our dna protection and when the telomeres run out our actual active telomeres are just useless dna it's just extra 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 spam dna to protect your and now i say spam it kind of sounds like email right you got to dig through all the spam mail to get to your regular mail yeah so if, if someone hacks your email account, they got to get through all your spam too to find your real mail. So telomeres are the protection to your DNA. As they fade, your regular DNA gets damaged more and that's a big deal. Then you accelerate aging. And this is one of those things, disease begets disease, wellness begets wellness. If you can elongate those telomeres, you literally have to work less to protect your DNA because there's already built in protection. So telomeres is the main way we can assess biological age. There's actually a test you can do for telomere aging to prove your biological age. And so that's the dots. If someone really wanted to connect, if I reverse my gut health, will I reverse my telomeres? You absolutely can check that and monitor it. And of course, cancer is a DNA damage situation for most people. So as your telomeres shorten, your cancer rates go up. As we all know, metabolism slows and we gotta work harder to lose weight. Brain function decreases and our bones age, our bones thin. So we don't need any lesson on aging. So in my attempt to connect the dots between gut health and aging, I think we've done a little bit along the way, but basically anything that worsens nutrients, inflammation, or detox causes aging. This makes sense, right? The more inflamed you are, the more you age. I mean, that just makes sense. The less nutrients you are, the more you age. The more toxic soup you carry around, the more you age. So if we improve nutrients by increasing our, our shag carpet, our digestion, then we reverse aging. If we reduce our inflammation through those things, we improve our detox, aging reverses. So that's the dots. That's all I got for you. <laughs> if you don't need more dots, then uh, we can talk about it. That's a next lesson. Um, I don't know if y'all ever heard this quote, death begins in the colon. Supposedly someone thousands of years ago said this, and I can't find the quote. I literally Googled this morning trying to find the quote. Some like Socrates or something, something said yeah, death well, begins in the colon. Somebody said, yeah, all disease starts in the gut. Maybe that's what, maybe I was typing the quote in Google wrong. So if anyone <laughs> can find who said it, I was going to put the actual name, but instead I found this really cool uh, picture when I was Googling instead. So I thought that was, that was pretty good. So um, death begins in the colon. Treating the gut causes non-gut issues to flare. 
that's one of the, the first light bulbs I saw in my early functional medicine career. One of them was I was treating a gut and their migraines got worse. I'm like, your brain isn't in your gut. How does that happen? So I've seen so many, uh, Marianne knows, as you go through the gut protocols, stuff flares before it gets better. And it always gets better, not just meaning it went away, meaning it's better than before the flare. Um, treating the gut reverses almost all autoimmune diseases. Treating the gut, which is, which is a bold statement. Can we just pause there for a second? Conventional medicine believes autoimmune disease you're, you, you're born with, and once you have it, you have it for life. I believe, and I have no way to prove this whatsoever, that all disease is autoimmunity. And to, like cancer, I still believe is an autoimmune disease. Once it's triggered, it's got a life of its own. So I don't want to say cancer is an autoimmune disease, but the creation of it is an autoimmune disease. Heart disease is an autoimmune disease. It's your own body attacking its blood vessels unintentionally, but it's trying to fix them. And instead it's attacking them, creating damage that then has heart disease. So that's one of my beliefs. Uh, treating the gut obviously reverses reflux, bloating. Um, treating the gut triggers metabolism. It literally speeds up your metabolism. If you have more nutrients, your metabolism is faster. That literally triggers weight loss. So countless times, Marianne, you're proof in the pudding, right? She lost a lot of weight when she started treating her gut. And I mean, you changed your diet, but I don't want to say you were a terrible eater before. You just yeah. started shedding weight with, okay. with treating. Yeah, it was impressive. 40 pounds. Was it 40? Wow. <laughs> she's, she's a miracle story. Yeah. She's awesome. Yeah. But don't, don't, she, she works hard. So <laughs> it's, it's not just like 40 pounds easily <laughs> dropped. She worked hard. She got it. Uh, uh, treating the gut restores hormones which that's a loaded gun because the, the hormones is really what causes aging. Aging is a hormonal imbalance. As our hormones drop, we stop repairing, we stop regrowing, we stop regenerating, we slow our metabolism. So restoring hormones is the anti-aging. And there's cheats, and I've, I've done other anti-aging stuff, and there's some more anti-aging stuff next year. There's all kinds of ways to stimulate anti-aging. I'll get into a little bit of it. This one's mostly focused on gut. So... This is more of my attempt at connecting the dots. How does gut health affect aging? Of course, if you're not digesting, you have a lack of nutrients. If you're not absorbing, lack of nutrients. Fermentation, here's your butyrate stimulates brain health. We're not gonna go into all the details. We're just hitting the highlights. Microbial balance affects, it, it's wild to believe, I shouldn't even say believe, it's science proven. Our microbiome does more detoxification than our liver. Hmm. We've previously thought, oh, the liver's the detox hmm. organ. It does all the hard work. Our microbiome has more DNA than our entire body. Our bacteria and fungi that live inside us have more DNA than our entire body. So they have all kinds of abilities to break down chemicals and toxins. And so our microbiome is a handoff back and forth between our liver and the microbiome to help us detoxify. So if you don't have the microbial balance, you don't have that handoff, which means the liver is doing all the work and can't keep up. And that's why you get liver congestion, all kinds of stuff. Microbial balance affects our lack of nutrients. We need bacteria to break down certain nutrients um, in order to absorb them. And then of course, a wrong imbalance causes inflammation. An improper barrier, leaky gut causes inflammation, autoimmunity, accelerates aging. And let's face it, not pooping <laughs> causes aging. I feel aged when I'm constipated. <laughs> uh, so how to, finally we get to the, the, the meat of this scenario, how to biohack your gut health to prevent and reverse aging. So we're gonna go over each of these topics, testing, nutrition, supplements, lifestyle, colon cleansing, what, and other modalities, and I've got some hints there. So my preferred test for gut health, there's, there's tons of stuff out there. All of them are terrible, except those two, basically. Uh, the GI effects is the main one we use. There's other people that do stool studies, but we like the GI effect from Genova the best. And then there's organic acids testing, which is a urine test, not a stool, but it looks at some of the same stuff. Um, here's the, the basics between a stool study and organic acids test. The, the, the real answer is the people that don't want to collect their stool do organic acids <laughs> testing is how that works. Some people have to do both. We frequently have to do the others, <laughs> yes. So typically what we do is we start with stool study because that gives us more direct answers, literally direct. Um, and then they were, after the stool study is mostly improved, then we do the organic acids testing to look further. But certainly if we're worried about mold, um, we don't get that answer from stool. So we would need organic acids test. And the organic acids is easier to identify fungal uh, like candida than, uh, than the stool study. Yeah. The... Uh, so nutrition, uh, Paige knows, we can talk about 
this for hours and hours, but the basics of nutrition, and we've got nutrition courses online for anyone that, that wants to learn more, um, but the basics in this world of, of biohacking your gut, you got to avoid the sugar, you got to avoid the processed foods, and you got to avoid the healthy junk foods. And maybe not completely, you don't have to be perfect, it's all about the 90%. So um, it, the main thing I want to highlight with the healthy junk foods is a paleo muffin is still a muffin, right. Right? it's still a carb bomb. So yes, you can have the paleo muffin, it's better than a regular muffin, but not by that much. Uh, let's zoom in here. Macro balancing, you gotta have your fats, proteins, and carbs with each meal. You should, the other issue with the paleo muffin is it's mostly carbs. There's not a lot of protein, not a lot of fat in it. So covered in butter, at least, to add some fat in there and maybe eat a sausage link or something with it. You gotta have that balance. And then if at all possible, aim for that nine cups of vegetables and fruit. One of my favorite quotes that uh, one of my friends made when he saw my video online, he texted me and said, Oob, how am I supposed to get nine cups of vegetables and fruit? Am I supposed to put broccoli in my Lucky Charms? <laughs> I was like, maybe not Lucky Charms. <laughs> that, that would do more good than adding the broccoli. Uh, funny guy. Uh, as far as supplements, I don't want to belabor these, but I wanted to at least list these for anyone online or anyone watching later that want to know, like, okay, what, what supplements can I immediately do to help with, with these things? So if you want to support digestion, you would do digestive enzymes and or betaine. I didn't add that in there. I wanted to talk about that if you need a stomach acid. The reason why is betaine can be a little more challenging. Um, watch my other videos on, on betaine. Then uh, sun butyrate helps with absorption because remember, butyrate feeds what? <laughs> the shag carpets. Sure. So those microvilli, those tiny little cells survive on butyrate. So by taking, sun butyrate is just a brand of butyrate. By taking sun butyrate, it actually feeds those intestinal cells, regenerates your shag. And if you regenerate the shag, it absorbs the nutrients, which then will feed itself. Okay. Uh, fermentation, Ultra GI Replenish is a protein powder with, with uh, beneficial fiber and, and stuff to help uh, restore the microbial balance. Probiotics for the microbial balance. But if anyone knows um, my practice at all, You've got to remove the bad guys to really restore your microbial balance. So that's where those biocidin protocols come in, right, Miriam? Uh, so I have biocidin protocol under the barrier because if you get rid of the bad guys, that will restore the barrier, um, will restore the microbial balance, will restore digestion. So really that, that biocidin protocol kind of helps front to back. And it also helps with elimination because if you can restore the microbial balance, the digestion, everything starts to work uh, front to end. Uh, if you stop the, the, the caboose of a train, the entire train stops. So if you get the, the engine moving, that pulls the entire train. So no matter if you restore this process, you won't need to do anything to restore elimination. That should happen on its own. But our favorite things for elimination are Cape Aloe pills or Natural Calm, which is just a powdered magnesium that tastes good. Okay. Uh, I have one tablespoon, but there's no limit on that. You just uh, poop your brains out if you take too much. So everybody's got to find their dose that works for some, some more than other. Real briefly, the, the biocide and gut restoration stuff, I've got it all outlined in our courses on how we do it, start to finish multiple rounds if anyone wants to do it. But the basics behind it is that it kills microbes. It disrupts biofilms, biofilms being the hiding places for bacteria and fungi. If you've ever seen a, a raspberry rotten in your fridge, it grows this little black film on it. And that, that's, that's not only, you're not only seeing the, the, the fungus, that's a fungus, a mold. Um, you're not only seeing the mold, each mold, each organism releases this, this juicy uh, matrix around it to protect itself because it can't be exposed to air that well. So it releases this, this polysaccharide, this sugar coating to protect itself from the outside world. It does no differently in our bowels. It releases the sugar coating to protect itself and hold on. Otherwise, if it doesn't hold on, it just gets pooped out. So these biofilms are actually stuck to our intestinal walls and we have to disrupt them in order to get the bad guys out and the good guys in. Of course, it helps eliminate biological toxins because these bad guys are making biological toxins. So if you remove them, you also remove their biological toxins. Helps rebuild the good guys, regenerate your shag carpet once again. And of course, if it restores motility, think of motility as pooping, right? So that's the colon. Lifestyle is incredibly important in all things. Doesn't matter whether it's gut health or detox, you gotta sleep, you gotta exercise, you gotta de-stress and you gotta avoid toxins. 
Uh, I'll put a little asterisk on exercise. It should just say movement, not exercise. Too often in America, we're so focused on exercise. You can absolutely get healthy and well just with basic movement, walking the block, yoga, whatever it may be. Yeah, always, but you've got to move your body some way or form. Um, of course, getting that high intensity exercise in benefits you, but we, we got to take the emphasis off of exercise. If you do more in the nutrition world, you'll, you'll make up for lack of exercise somewhat. Colon cleansing for people that are stuck with, with poor elimination, you gotta get the poop out. So colonics are the most expensive version and the most aggressive version to get the poop out if you've been backed up. We look at this as physical therapy for the bowels. If you sprained your ankle, you wouldn't just go try to run a marathon, you'd get rehab and physical therapy. So no different than your bowels. If you've been constipated for years and years and years, you might need to do colonics to, to resume colon function. Um, you can also do kind of colonics at home by doing coffee enemas. It's not your typical cafe au lait with, with yes. cream in it. It's a, it's a, it's a, it is it's coffee. Uh, they like to use different coffees for coffee enemas. If anyone's ever done, there's plenty of stuff online on how to do coffee enemas. This is what it looks like. It's, uh, mm -hmm. I like the metal bins better than the plastic bags. It just looks like poop already. So I prefer not to see it. Uh, stool transplants, those I wanted to at least put on the list. That's really unattainable right now because of the FDA. Yeah, yeah. it's like getting someone else's stool is a microbial transplant. Yeah, microbial, microbiome transplant. The benefits are absolutely incredible, but the FDA has ruled someone else's stool as a drug. So you can't get someone else's drug. <laughs> so there's been a drastic slowdown in research and availability of that. You can only get it if you have C. diff, but they've proven stool transplants can reverse autoimmunity, inflammation, all kinds of incredible things. Is it more prevalent with C's anyway? I don't know. I, I do believe they're doing it in Mexico. So okay. I think the answer is yes. And I know there's someone on, in the islands, Caribbean islands somewhere mm. doing them for, for people. But um, yeah, but you just got to worry that, well, whose stool am I getting? Because that's the important part. Mm -hmm. You're getting, getting someone else's crappy stool, pun intended. Nice. It's not going to help you. You got to get good stool yeah. with lots of fiber. Um, yeah, they were actually taking volunteers all over the United States back when it was a big deal. It's kind of shrunk since then. But um, they would take applicants and you would have to send in your poop as an application and they would measure it and determine whether you were a good candidate or not. You would be chosen or not. And then if you were chosen, they, they would pay you based on the weight of the stool. Oh <laughs> True story. It's just like donating plasma, but it was donating poop with a lot less pain and, and no blood draw. Right? Uh, different modalities, believe it or not, can help with gut health. So IV infusions, specifically NAD plus and ozone are very well known in the, the anti-aging world, but also helps restore hormones, which helps restore gut function. Rectal ozone is a big deal. If anyone listens to Dave Asprey, that sounds kind of gross, but it's actually pretty simple and, and well tolerated. Uh, HBOT is hyperbaric oxygen chamber. So getting under pressure and oxygen seems to regenerate microbiome, which is a wild thought, but anything that delivers more nutrients to your shag carpet, regenerate shag carpet, a regenerated shag carpet will build, rebuild your microbiome because that's what it wants to do. So hyperbaric oxygen delivers more oxygen to that area of tissue that may not be getting enough oxygen. So it seems kind of weird that you would breathe oxygen and be under pressure, which would help your microbiome, but the research is there. It's not, I'm not making it up. IR sauna is infrared sauna. So just heating the body up, stimulating its energy. Um, we're just like plants. We are energetic humans. We spend too much time indoors, not enough sunlight. So infrared sauna is both a detox thing, but not enough people look at it as an energy restoration thing. It's infrared light, which means if you could actually see infrared, you would be blinded by the light. Uh, blinded. <laughs> but the, so the infrared sauna is literally light stimulating your internal cells, not just heat. So there are kind of three types of saunas. There's infrared saunas, which are hot, um, but a lot of the benefit is infrared rays. Then there's just dry sauna, which is like an oven. You just, it's just heated, right? And then the third one is the steam sauna, and that goes in order of tolerability. You have to have higher temperatures of dry heat to get some of the same benefits, which is why infrared sauna is nice. At lower temperatures, which are more tolerable, you get the same benefits as a higher heat in dry sauna. And then third, wet sauna. If anyone's ever been in a wet sauna, Steamer. Steamer. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> Suffocating. Yes. So can't stay in as long, which means you won't get as many benefits is the idea. Now, some people are incredible. Like the Finnish people, 
but in Finland, they are they are just sauna freaks. They can yeah. do all kinds of stuff. It's <laughs> inhuman. And then cold plunges. I'm excited to announce we will be getting our cold plunge. Oh. Oh. I know. <laughs> Everyone's excited, as you can tell. Oh. Uh, gosh, the benefits are, are unreal. So I've already started prepping. I'm terrible with cold. I'm absolutely terrible with cold. I signed up at a cryo place because I'm cheap. So I thought, if I pay, I will go. <laughs> I didn't go. I went <laughs> twice. I went <laughs> twice to like, cancel the membership. I can't do it. Uh, so we'll be getting a cold plunge here. And I read an article that said, if you can tolerate a cold shower, that's your building blocks to getting into a cold oh. plunge. So I've been experimenting with a cold shower and it's a little shocking to the system, but if you can start to tolerate it, they said getting into a cold plunge, that's your stepping stone to the cold plunge. Uh, like three chiro minutes. Than cold plunge? What's that? You think the chiro has any advantages or disadvantages? Chiro so the, there, most people will tell you that, tell you, I don't know if the research truly supports this or not. The cold plunge is more beneficial but you get a lot of the same benefits with cryo. Cryo is kind of like the infrared sauna situation. Dry cold is a lot more tolerable than wet cold. But in this scenario, unlike the infrared sauna that I just explained, the wet cold has more benefits because it's more extreme. Yeah. Yeah. It's a silence. <laughs> I mean, what is cold? Because cold to me is 50. 50. <laughs> 60, 70, okay. 50. Yeah. That now, obviously, like if you can't tolerate fifty, then a higher temperature would be better because getting started in it means you can get down there. But what's that? Yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> One hundred two. I'll do. I'll experiment today. <laughs> so the goal is to get some cold exposure because the idea is, and I, I will do this presentation. I, I've done it before, but we're doing it in February. <laughs> is anti-aging, one of the main ways to anti-age or reverse aging is to get uncomfortable. We live too comfortable, yeah. air conditioning, and we, like everything's comfort, and it's nice, we love comfort, but we're not exposed to discomfort as much anymore. So exposing yourself to a, an extreme discomfort for a short amount of time gets the same benefits as a less extreme for a longer time. So when the winter hits, instead of being 40 degrees for six months, you get in the cold plunge for three minutes and you get the benefits. So it's stimulating, ironically, heat shock proteins. And we'll get into that another day. So we've got several things happening this month. Uh, every month we're doing a community event on a topic. And on that topic, we're gonna put something on sale that kind of mention that, that mirrors that. So this month we're doing 20% off the NAD plus infusions. Um, Despite that's not actually one of the big microbiome boosters, we didn't have any infusion that really works on the microbiome too much. So we did NAD plus because that's the main anti-aging uh, infusion, ozone being the second anti-aging infusion. Anything that detoxes you will be anti-aging. And then we're doing 20% off our skin products. They're known as Ioka. You can shop online, you just search in our store for Ioka. And there's the code for the 20% off if you buy it online, biohacking. And then I'm doing 50% off my gut restoration course. And the code for that is gut biohack. We couldn't do the same code because it's two different percentages. Mm -hmm. uh, or at least we couldn't figure it out how to do it in our system. Does that include updates too as you? As it will. Yeah, absolutely it will. Uh, right now, it's really holding the test of time. Mm -hmm. Sure. So that one's going to be there for a while. It takes a while to record it. So I imagine that'll be the same course for a couple of years. We're planning on overhauling the nutrition courses next. Um, and then of course we offer our memberships. Uh, the, the root membership is, is the kind of the provider membership where you see the prescriber and the nutritionist is what we're calling it. And then the renew membership is where you don't really get the prescriber, you get all the stuff. So you get two ozone infusions a month, you get two hyperbarics a month, you get vitamin shots, uh, and then you'll get cold plunges in the next month or so when that comes in. And, uh, and then we now offer pay per visits. So people that don't want to do the membership, they can pay as they go. The first two visits is a 90 minute visit and a 60 minute visit for 500 and then 60 minute follow-ups for 189. And I didn't put on there because I ran out of time. 60 minute visits with the nutritionist are gonna be 99. So what questions, I flew through that. And it's 11.59, despite starting late, I still managed to pull it off pretty on time. So what questions do you guys have? I don't see anything in the chat. <laughs> well, I think they're still sulking over the cold plunge. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's what the infrared sauna is, right? Yeah. You do the cold plunge, and 
But I need to do some more reading and research about that. I really want to know, like, well, do you waste the benefits? Because if, if part of the benefit is warming yourself naturally, or I shouldn't say that's not the benefit. If you get the benefit by warming yourself naturally, then immediately jumping into the infrared sauna, you might rob yourself of some of the benefits. So I'm really curious, like, what's the order? What's the benefit if you do infrared sauna first, get yourself hot, and then the cold is even more of a shock? Would there be a benefit, right? <laughs> <laughs> so more to be determined on that. I gotta go seek the anti-aging experts. I remember as a child stuff. we used to we used to sit in the sauna for hours, for an hour, and then roll in the snow. Yeah, Afterwards, we didn't feel the cold in the shoe. Yeah, and yeah. We do those type of things. Then we went back because I grew up in Germany. So yeah, is yeah, that where you're? Interesting. So yeah, look at that. Oh my goodness. Oh. <laughs> I know. It doesn't sound bad though. I don't remember. Maybe my mind forgets. Yeah. That. <laughs> Time heals all wounds. <laughs> When you're young, uh, you know, yeah. kids, <laughs> that makes a difference. If you have a side question, I'm not going to expect this, but I'm asking because you're just in Colorado also, uh -huh. and I'm wondering how uh, high altitudes, when you get to that record where it's 10,000, 10,500 feet from my house is, you know, what, what are things are affected in particular? I'm wondering about blood pressure. So it won't affect blood pressure necessarily. The main thing it affects, and I'd have to do more to understand it, but really living in altitude doesn't have that many benefits unless you're an athlete as far as i know as far as anti-aging or living longer it'll you'll just be triggered to carry more red blood cells in your bloodstream so if you look at someone's uh hemoglobin which is your anemia count a person at altitude will carry more hemoglobin per blood so less water per blood practically um but that's that's about the only thing so Athletes really seek that. They exercise yeah. at altitude. They try to live at altitude so they have more red blood cells. But it doesn't affect blood pressure. I, I'm sure it has microscopic changes to blood pressure, but not really. I'd say that the downside of living in altitude is that you're closer to the sun. So as far as skin aging, mm -hmm. and so oddly enough, we were in Colorado. And um, we're, the first night, we got there on Friday. Saturday morning, I woke up, told my wife, I had the weirdest dream. I dreamed I was sunburned. And I should know this, I'm embarrassed to admit it, but I'll admit it. I said, honey, we're closer to the sun. Like, <laughs> shouldn't I, like, isn't that a risk? And she's like, I don't know about that. I'm like, okay. So all Saturday, we spent the entire day, uh -huh. Sunday morning, <laughs> woke up sunburned. And I was like, I manifested, yeah. I created it. But I didn't even think about it because it was such cool temperatures. Uh -huh. So we're used to being in Texas. Uh -huh. If you're sunburned, it's because you are sweating and you are hot. Your face is tingling. No, we were in cool temperatures. I had no idea until Sunday morning I woke up red like a lobster. Like, I'm not clearly an out-of-towner. Here I am. I think your oxygen levels go down, too. Yes. Because I did see a lot of people that I've talked to there that have oxygen rooms where they yeah. sleep in. And other people taking oxygen. Down. And that's also, that's where the benefit comes in, though. Because that's why your red blood cells go up. is because of the lack of oxygen. Yeah, so what happens is as you increase your red blood cells, you're able to pull more oxygen out of the air than someone at sea level could. Mm -hmm. So that balances the breathing. Mm -hmm. So if they slept in the oxygen room or slept in a hyperbaric chamber or something, it would kind of disrupt the benefit of the altitude. Mm -hmm. I've been reading lately, uh -oh. you were talking about... <laughs> <laughs> She's going to push me to something I don't know. No, <laughs> uh, about the... Um, the omega-6, omega-3 balance. Okay. And that all of our uh, junk food, processed food, of course, is very high in the omega-6. Mm -hmm. And that that's what's causing an awful lot of health problems. Is I mean, it's not just that the processed food is bad. It has all the other stuff, too. Yeah, it has mm -hmm. the other stuff. But it said the number one thing is the, um, the high... Omega six. Yeah, omega six. I L A. So acid. I'd say it's hard to tell what the true culprit is in processed foods, right? Because there's so many demons. It's toxic. It's processed. It's high carbs, mm -hmm. and it's it's omega sixes. So I wouldn't even really push the pressure to blaming omega six as much as mm -hmm. they do, because our own body makes omega sixes. The true issue there is not the presence of omega sixes. It's the absence of omega threes. Our cellular membranes exist with multiple, multiple uh, omegas mm -hmm. in our lipid membranes. And it's supposed to have a balance of omega-3s, omega-6s, omega-9s, and that balance is what keeps the membrane fluid. 
I like to compare it to the front door of your house. If the front door of your house has 20 deadbolts on it, it's going to be a pain every time you go in and out of the house. You got a deadbolt yes. each one, right? If your front door has no deadbolts or no door at all, there's going to be bugs inside. There's going to be stuff you don't want inside. It's that right balance of you have a door, you have a deadbolt, and you can open it freely. That's what your cellular membrane is. Your cellular membrane is a fluid membrane that's allowing nutrients in and toxins out. Too much fluidity, the cell dies because too much stuff entered or too much stuff left. So it's that appropriate balance. So um, the omega balance does two main things. The fluidity, which controls nutrients in, nutrients out, receptors sticking in and out of it. And the number two is your immune system, when it goes to turn off inflammation, it reaches inside of that cellular membrane for an agent to turn off inflammation. These inflammatory, now inflammation is really complicated, so I'm just talking about one version of it. The anti-inflammation, these things are called SPMs, um, specialized pro-resolving mediators is what these SPMs are called. Um, they make a product now, SPM Supreme, SPM Active, Metagenics makes one, Design for Health makes one. And so with, what that supplement is, basically a specialized omega-3 that the, okay. in, the same thing, the immune cells reach into the cellular membrane, grab an omega-3, convert it to an SPM to turn off inflammation. So rewind that story and say the immune system just created inflammation, reaches into the cellular membrane to turn off inflammation, but there's no omega-3, so it grabs an omega-6. An omega-6 is an inflammatory molecule. It turns into yeah. prostaglandins and leukotrienes, which are pro-inflammatory. This is chronic inflammation. The in of, is it really the presence of omega-6, or is it the absence of the ability to turn it off? Or is it a combination? So that's the deal. That's why every human being, um, I, I guess I didn't mention the, 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 the lifetime supplements we put people on. Mm -hmm. Fish oil is one of those lifetime yeah. supplements. Yeah. You either got to eat the fish or take the oil. There's no excuse. You can't live without it. You can't be optimal without it. Humans cannot make omega-3s. We make, I, that's improper to say that. You technically can make, make omega-3s, but it's so crappy. It's not even like, no one's at zero omega-3s but they'll get pretty low. You can eat plant-based omega-3s, but plant-based omega-3s, is, which is where we generate our omega-3s from, we can only convert about 10% of the omega-3s from a plant into the, the fish oil-based oh, omega-3s. Yeah. And so in order to eat that many nuts fish. and seeds yeah. to get there, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it would be healthy because it'd be a lot of nuts and seeds, but you just can't generate enough omega-3s out of it. So you've got to eat the fish or take the oil. Fire away. Okay, when you're talking about healing your gut and the junctures, mm -hmm. um, what about diverticula? Ah, so diverticula is a is kind of, yeah, it's not necessarily going to, by page, uh, it's not necessarily about leaky gut. It's more that the idea behind diverticula is more about the idea of weakening the bowel wall. I don't think anyone truly knows the pathophysiology of how it develops, but the idea is that the diver, we, the, the, if you think of the tunnel through the mountain, mm -hmm. if the, the tunnel in the mountain starts to weaken, you're going to get bulges in the, the structure. Mm -hmm. The mountain's going to cave inward. Well, we're humans and bacteria are trying to get inward. So we do the opposite of the tunnel. We bulge outwards instead mm -hmm. of inwards. And so these diverticuli are pouches, weakenings in the muscle because the muscle is supposed to keep things squeezed and keep things moving mm -hmm. forward. But if that muscle weakens too much, you get a bulge and that bulge is known as the diverticuli. And that's fed by inflammation, that's fed by bad bacteria, mold, whatever it may be, chronic inflammation. Yeah. yeah. So diverticuli, most people believe once you have it, now it is mostly true that once you have it, that does seem to be something that you will have the rest of your life. But I've had numerous patients, actually one of my good friends, I met <laughs> in an urgent care, uh, because he had a diverticulitis <laughs> flare, yeah. And so I'll save you that story of, of what happened in that visit. He, he doesn't like to relive it. And, um, but we, for, for months afterwards, if not a couple of years, before I was a functional medicine doctor, he would get these flares, I would put them on antibiotics. Well, after I started learning more about functional medicine, hey dude, we gotta do this gut stuff. We fixed his gut. He has, I don't wanna say never had a flare, because he's had a couple like really mild ones, not even enough to need antibiotics mm -hmm. uh, during times of stress or bad eating or whatnot. Mm -hmm. But basically he's cured of it. He most he still has diverticula in his bowels, but they don't get inflamed because he's got the right balance of bacteria. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Not to say it can't ever happen, but we don't treat any diverticulitis now. Everyone's diverticulitis that comes to see us, we restore their gut. It, the symptoms go away once again. The diverticulitis are there. It's, it's just the inflammation of them is what causes diverticulitis, the pain. Yeah. And so that inflammation not only causes it can get infected, but um, the zap. I had read inflammation causes the polyps yeah, to so, become cancerous. Exactly. Well, inflammation is the leading cause of all cancer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they've proven that the more chronic inflammation you have, the more polyps, the more cancer. It's why people with ulcerative colitis and Crohn's, that's the obvious link. Just like we talked about gingivitis yeah. uh -huh. causing heart disease, people with ulcerative colitis and Crohn's, that is bowel inflammation. The longer you have ulcerative, ulcerative colitis and Crohn's that's active, the more likely you have bone cancer. Yeah, so chronic inflammation anywhere causes cancer anywhere. Mm -hmm. Obviously, more in the source. No, mm -hmm. no different than why like smokers get mm -hmm. oral cancers. Mm -hmm. Non-smokers never get oral cancer. I shouldn't say never, but very, very, very rare. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's because that smoking is inflammatory, so it eventually causes cancer. In addition to the toxins, yeah, alcoholics get esophageal cancer because mm -hmm. alcohol causes chronic inflammation, so they're more likely to get esophageal cancer, liver cancer, stomach cancers. Yeah. Alcohol is a toxin. Yeah. Good questions. I don't see anything online. Yeah. Is there anything between what we're talking about here and, and allergies? Well, absolutely. So, no, I'll, and no, I'll, no. I'll tell you my own story briefly. Um, so, whatever happens in the gut is pissing off the immune system to go look for irritants elsewhere. We're not supposed to be allergic to our environment. It's our immune system autoimmunity. Mm -hmm. Everything's autoimmunity in my mind. So if you irritate the immune system too much, it starts looking for something else to attack. So it starts attacking your nose in response to pollens and things. So if you reverse your gut issues, your allergies go away. So my story is, I wouldn't believe it if I told myself what happened to me. I, in, when I was in med school residency, I developed chronic daily allergies. They were the same every day, rain or shine, season, nothing, every day the same. I was on Flonase, I was on Neti Pot, and I was always blowing my nose, and it was the same day of suffering every day, and those things at least kept me at bay. Fast forward four years, um, I had done allergy testing, all kinds of nothing popped up, so I just, I don't know, it's my thing, I just gotta live with this the rest of my life. <laughs> after I gave up dairy, not for this reason, after I gave up dairy, which I really didn't want to do, it took a long time, but literally two days after I completely cut out dairy, my daily chronic allergies completely went away. Completely went away. Now, I tell that story, not everyone's been so lucky as I am, but what that proves is, once again, a gut thing. It's not like I was shoving cheese in my nose. <laughs> it's a, eating dairy was triggering my allergies, and now to this day, I've reversed most of my inflammation and stuff, so I can eat those foods and not get bothered. But to this day, when I eat dairy, I'm snotty for three to five days oh, after. Right. Yeah, it's, it's like clockwork. And my wife will call me out on it when I'm all snotty. She's like, you ate dairy. And I said, good. You fed it to me. That's amazing. Yeah. Good. So there's ways to reverse it. Not everyone is the same. But the, the idea is that allergens stack on top of each other. Sure. And you can't change the pollen in the air. You can't change the, the mold outdoors. But if you remove some of the other allergens, then those molds and pollens fall low enough to not trigger your immune system. Your immune system's already at DEFCON 6, yep. so anything reacts. Mm -hmm. That's the idea. Good. Okay, good. Well, I appreciate you guys joining me. Again, Peter and yeah, Mary. I, I take use my phone to take notes. I always think people are texting but it's taking notes. Oh, that's fine. I know, I know it's funny. I always yeah. think people are thinking, you know, they can do more. All right, well, I forgot to say next month is. What's the date of the month? I know it's my system. We have, I can look real quick. Now I'm kind of curious because I have to. to just, yeah, I, have to go, <laughs> I have to go skiing, so. You are? Yeah, I am going to break in for winter. Oh, fine. How are you? Yeah. So are you going to join us online then? I will. As long as I can get, as long as I'm teaching that day. Uh, well, and it's, I'm, I've now hopefully got the recording down. The recording as, long as, as long as I do it right, it should end up on YouTube. This is only this is an hour, but it's the work on afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Look online. There's so many places you point us to. Yeah. You have to leave a lot of time to follow up to get benefit. Okay, here we go. Uh, boost your brain health in November. Okay. Yeah. What, what's the date? Uh, November eight. Okay, I should be. Fine. And then right December six. So yeah. December is finding it's balance good. during the holidays. It's always good. Mm -hmm. So there are some really, really.
fascinating stuff. When we wrote that, when we planned that Boost Your Brain Health, uh -huh. um, there was already a lot of things we could do, but there's some really neat stuff coming down the pipe that we're starting right. to experiment with on our patients and seeing some, I don't want to say incredible results, but just the ability to boost your brain function is kind of um, weird in its own, mm -hmm. but now there's literal hacks that you can get oh, more wow. out of your brain health. Wow. Well, when you get to be my age, you start it's seeing your true. friends mm -hmm. really declining. It's scary. It's, it's and it's so sad. Dementia, oh, diabetes of the brain. Great, great, yeah. Some people don't know it. Yep. Mm -hmm. What scary. is it they call it? Diabetes type three or three, something? Three, yeah. Mm -hmm. I heard someone recently, and I mean, it's uh, sugar is really a, a root of so many evils, but I heard recently that breast cancer is diabetes of the boobs. Like, oh, it, well. Sugar causes cancer. It makes sense. Uh, uh, so I think you could extrapolate that to say sugar just causes disease everywhere. Yeah. It feeds the gut, which then creates inflammation, which then causes disease everywhere, heart disease, uh -huh. right? Well, so, I know you're a thought leader. I appreciate it. Remember when I learned you from Thailand, so it's, <laughs> oh, it's got to be uh, worldwide. Multiple people have referenced that.